If I could jump in, doesn't this event, uh, maybe to some extent singularly, suggest to NIM that, look, what you have to do, do quick? Because you're not a political party yet. Yes. Uh, in every change process, there must be sense of urgency. And we have to come up with superior organization and knowledge to achieve that. And that is being done. So is the strategy to maybe wait until the appropriate time? And is that time now? That, or when will that be? That is being fine-tuned. And NIM is firmly on course. That sounds like a politician, Prof. Mr. <laughs> Dr. Mojaiti. <laughs> oh, Prof, uh, we have gotten to this point where the, the National Assembly says that no, it's not going to sweep this matter under the carpet. As a matter of fact, it's in, uh, invited uh, Ibrahim Idris, the IGP, and Lol Dora, the DSS boss, uh, to, to meet with them. Do you think that something likely positive is going to come out of this? Because it's not the first time that Amaze has been taken, as you've rightly said. But do you think that something is going to come out of this in terms of investigating what happened? Uh, I think we have to contextualize the, you know, the, the democratic process that is going on now, uh, particularly with this eight National Assembly. Uh, this eight National Assembly uh, started with a lot of drama. You know, you remember even the uh, selection or the election of the president was <laughs> fraught with all kinds of drama, people going into car boots, you know, appearing and disappearing. And I think it's, 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 uh, it's about time that the political class, you know, take cognizance of the people that they are ruling. It's gotten to a point that there is a lot of distrust and disconnect between the ruling class and the followership. To the extent that people are not shocked about anything anymore because people are becoming jaded with the level of unseriousness that people treat national issues. This, you know, connects to the question you have asked with respect to inviting the IGP and the DSS and all that. The whole nation is in a state of insecurity. And symbolically, if the National Assembly could just be invaded by five men, whether they were wielding gun or not, and make away with the haze, which is, maze, which is a symbol of authority, I, I don't think anybody should feel safe again. So it, it calls for further investigation. Uh, state governors have been crying about killings, and we have excuses about Gaddafi training people. Why are we spending so much money on defense and security? What is the value that we get from all this? Look, the Constitution is very clear in Section 14. The duty of the state is to guarantee security and welfare. Now the and, people, and if this is not done, then what, why do we have the IGP, how do we have the DSS, and all that? So this, this calls for serious investigation. Remember that this occurred while it was reported that we had visitation from you know, uh, parliamentary uh, members from Ghana. Mm -hmm. Why do we treat everything like a joke and with levity? I, I believe this must be seriously investigated, and it shouldn't be one of those investigations that are popularized in the calling for the investigation, and the outcomes goes into voicemail. Mm. So what would you like to see again? Because uh, some of the pictures were captured. Yeah. As a matter of fact, two gentlemen in red attire, uh, native attire, I would say, should have been the first thing the DSS should go after. Apart what do you think that, is happening? Even the vehicle that carried them was captured. <laughs> so basically, you have registration number. It's not as if these are ghosts. There are people. So it tells you about the security that we have. In other places where security are serious uh, with their work, by now, everybody involved will have been arrested, wherever they are. They are not ghosts, they are human beings. And now we have a court order saying that, you know, one of the principal actors in this should not be <laughs> even mm. touched if, if by you, the... If you, right. if you say that, what, if I refer you to the Mena case that he was in the country, as a matter of fact, he yeah. resumed office, and he was not arrested by the DSS or the EFCC, yeah. what more can, can... If you have to relate that to uh, trying to investigate this case, are we really having that...
uh, uh, innate state of mind to really investigate the security of this country as to uh, try to see that we don't get to a point where Nigeria can be invaded? Well, my own response is the way I started out. It's all politics. Because, you know, one group is pro-executive, one group is pro the National Assembly. So the group, obviously, that will be pro the executive will have, you know, the assumed intervention of the executive in their favor. And that is what gives the impunity and effrontery for people to take this action because they believe there will be no consequence. If there are consequences, because in any legal system, where there is a law, there is a sanction. That's why we say we are governed by legal norms. The moment we are governed by ordinary norms that brings no sanction, then we are in a state of anarchy. So in a, in a situation where a uh, senator is about or is being sanctioned by the body he belongs to, and then he, this is believed to be his own kind of reaction, where, where then is the place of sanctioning? Basically, the question is, how did they come about the sanctioning him? It's reported that he went to court to preempt the sanctioning. And if a matter is in court, then, of course, what is the effect of the court order or the service of the court notice? It's presumed that probably it should stop the proceedings from going on. And then what is the composition of those that are sanctioned? You know, particularly when you have the triumvirate of Dino Milaye, uh, 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 the, the, the Senate president, and also the deputy Senate president ruling the Senate. And in this particular composition, Dino Milaye was there. Is that the picture out there? That's the picture out there. So if you are going to, that's why the Constitution says that in the determination of the civil rights and obligation of a person, a tribunal or a body must be constituted in a way that ensures its impartiality. Where there is no impartiality, there can be no justice. Mm -hmm.